Abby Lee Miller has been teasing a season nine of Dance Mom since April of 2022. She mentions it in interviews, posts about auditions, and has announced that they're starting to film competitions this month. There's also a Dance Moms reboot in the works with Brian Stinson and Studio Blue, but that's a totally separate project. In the midst of these vague promises for a ninth season of the show that got her famous when the network it was on cut ties with her in 2020 for being racist, a new streaming service called Brandon TV announced a new reality show with Abby called Madhouse. Madhouse stars dancers ages 18 and up fighting for a spot to live and train with Abby. Madhouse began airing in the fall of 2023, and when I posted about it on TikTok saying that I didn't want to pay $6 a month, Brandon TV reached out to me and they said that they'd give me 24 hours of free access to watch it. I ended up paying for it anyway so I could watch all of the episodes instead of just the first one, but I did it for you guys. And let me tell you, I have never seen a show like this before. Hi, I'm JB, and I watched Madhouse so you don't have to. And I know I've been gone for a long time. I know. And I know I have a pimple on my chest. You can stop saying hurtful things. Today I'm going to recap every episode of Madhouse and we'll see what Abby's been up to lately. For more on the history of Abby Lee Miller, you can check out my last two videos. I promise part three is on the way, but I thought this would be good to hold you guys over until then. Make sure to like and subscribe so that I'm motivated to continue making videos. All right, now before we jump into the first episode, I want to talk about the streaming service that hosts it, Brandon TV, and how we got here. BTV was founded by Brandon Stewart in 2019. The founder and CEO Brandon is an LA-based singer and producer. He got a start on season 12 of American Idol, which I would show you if I could. Not that I'm accusing him of lying. I am not. I did not! His LinkedIn page says he was a finalist and it's mentioned in a bunch of interviews and stuff, but my roommate and I spent an entire afternoon looking for footage and came up empty. We watched all of the auditions for season 12 and didn't see him there. And according to the American Idol wiki, after auditions, there were 286 contestants who made it to Hollywood week and then only 40 made it past that point. I think that brand Brandon may have been eliminated at this point because there's no record of him in the top 40, but episode 7 and part 1 of episode 8 weren't on Daily Motion, and I didn't see him in part 2 of episode 8, so I'm pretty sure that any footage of him on American Idol has been like totally ripped off the internet. Sorry for that weird tangent, but we literally spent hours on that. After American Idol, Brandon graduated high school, went to college, and moved to LA. There, he worked with many media companies as an executive assistant, head of content, and producer, while also growing his own platform on social media. In 2018, Brandon signed with Awesomeness TV as a content creator and began to produce content on his channel for them. Awesomeness TV was later acquired by Viacom. In 2017, Brandon created and produced Shine, a singing competition series. So we are the number one competition web series in America. Wow. I'm pretty sure that Shine was first posted on Brandon's personal YouTube channel before it was on BTV, but he has now changed his personal YouTube channel into the BTV channel, so it's no longer available. Shine was later part of this collaboration with Awesomeness TV. Brandon launched his production and distribution studio, Brandon TV, in 2019, which was acquired by Viacom, I assume through Awesomeness TV. So Brandon TV is basically a digital platform. Um, we're under the Viacom umbrella, of course. The TV shows made by Brandon TV were available on their website to stream. They had shows like Shine, Sister Rules, Summer Lane Drive and Rusty Camel, and short films like A Christmas Dinner, which starred Ava Michelle, former select team member on Dance Moms, and The Tall Girl from Tall Girl. Brandon and Ava actually have worked together on multiple projects and seem to be pretty good friends. Some of these shows are available on the BTV app now, but a lot of them I could only find through the Wayback Machine since their website looks totally different now and shares a lot less information about the company. Brandon Stewart and BTV started to pop up around Abby around August of 2021 when child influencers Simone Harrison and Nick Bensevago collabed with her on YouTube. Brandon produced and edited the video that Abby posted with them. Based on the social media stuff I can find, Brandon worked closely with many child influencers, including Simone, Nick, and Claire Rock, who is now starring on a different BTV show, Snowbound, which also stars Lily from Dance Moms. It's all connected, guys. It's all connected. In February of 2022, BTV started appearing at the end of Abby's YouTube videos. I assume they filmed or edited or produced it in some way. Then, in April 
2022, Abby posted that video alluding to a season nine, which she has since changed the name of. If you followed me on TikTok when that video came out, I was so pissed. I don't even want a season nine of Dance Bombs. I just, I, I couldn't stand for the clickbait, you know? BTV continued to create videos with Abby while creating other content for their website. In an interview with Entertainment Tonight in April of 2023, Abby talks about her new projects, including a documentary about her time in prison and her journey with cancer, and also her own version of Dance Moms that is still in the works. She says it has nothing to do with the old network, but there will be moms and kids, and that she'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the moms, but also the older kids. Yeah, that's 16 to 22 there okay and those are the ages of the kids that watched the show when they were little and right. now they're grown up this is the first the public heard of abby working with older kids in a tv show setting because we all know abby loves her minis but it wasn't until july that madhouse was announced a new tv show starring abby it would be released on the new btv streaming service coming in september 2023 and would cost 5.99 a month the first episode of madhouse came out on september 29th which was the same day that the btv app was available in the app store it premiered four hours later than it was supposed to due to like demand issues or something which they posted about on instagram and that leads us to episode one of the madhouse buckle up folks i know i've already mentioned the premise a few times but it's a little hard to explain so a group of young adults will be selected to live and train with abby to become working employable dancers btv categorizes the show as a competition series but it's not quite clear what they are competing for like there are challenges and people can be kicked out of the house and new people can come in but there's not like a prize. I'm recording this before the finale airs, so I'm not sure if there's something the winner gets or if there will even be a winner. The premise is muddy and I will continue to complain. Also, before we start, BTV doesn't have closed captions. I love watching things with the captions on, so it's annoying, but more importantly, it's an accessibility issue. Especially when you don't have any sound people working on your show and you can't hear half the shit anyone is saying. I know I'm not great at sound, okay? This is plugged into my phone, which I have pop socketed onto my laptop right now. I'm a stage manager, not a sound designer. But like, I make sure you guys can hear me in my videos. You know, I try my hardest. Anything that they could have done would have been better than what they did for sound, okay? All right, all right, I'll quit stalling. Let's jump into episode one. Episode one takes us through the auditions for the show. We can only guess at the legitimacy of them. They may have known who was getting cast on the show before, but that's par for course on reality shows. Hey everyone, just wanted to pop in for a sec and let you know that there aren't gonna be many actual clips from the show itself. I can't screen record the BTV app, and that's really the main reason why. I also don't wanna get any copyright claims. You guys know how it is. Any clips that I do use from the show, I probably got off of the BTV BTV, like Instagram or TikTok and stuff like that. Anything that's been posted on socials, I feel okay to use, but actual clips and scenes from the show, I don't really have access to share. All right, back to me. The episode opens with a large group of dancers entering the BTV studio as a montage of news stories about Abby play over it. Things we know already. She sold the ALDC building. She went to jail. She uses a wheelchair now. We all know this, right? We're all caught up. The audition begins with Abby asking the dancers to walk across the floor. She immediately stops a dancer to make fun of her outfit, specifically about the masculinity of the basketball shorts she's wearing. You do the same thing, like you're in the basketball shorts, going out with the guys to shoot some hoops. <laughs> Abby's traditional views on gender expression make many appearances throughout this show. As all the dancers walk across the floor, Abby critiques each of them. She stops Hannah to tell her that her outfit isn't good for an audition. This is an audition. You want to come looking your best. When mom's not around, we have this outfit, and this is all we have. Hannah's a familiar face because she was in the season eight cast of Dance Moms. So she's known Abby for a while at this point. Okay, then we see a clip of Abby making a dancer spit out his gum into her hand, and she's like, who's your teacher? <laughs> and I 
actually loved this so much. Like it made me laugh really hard. Running around and dancing with gum in your mouth is a safety issue. I agree with Abby on this one. So next, Abby has them all sing. The MAD in Madhouse stands for music, acting, and dance. I know this because a Dance Mom spoilers account on Instagram told me before the show started airing. And they literally only mention this once in the show. They say it in the next episode and it never comes up again. So yeah, so this one guy starts singing and he seems really nervous, but then another guy joins in and they like come together and they both sing more confidently together. But Abby jumps in and says that they're each other's competition, so they shouldn't be helping each other. Then after the singing, Abby has everyone do improv scenes where she provides the prompts. I'm a theater person, right? Like I'm a stage manager. I did a lot of performing like in high school and before that. So I've done my fair share of improv exercises, okay? The prompts that she gives are so awful and confusing and she makes fun of them no matter what they do. So the vibe is just terrible. That is not the way to lead improv. Abby has always kind of had the mindset that a dancer should say yes to everything at an audition. Think like the talent agent in season one of Dance Moms, right? No matter what they ask you, yes. Put the S on it, let me hear it. Yes. 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 Can you sing? Yes. Can you dance? Yes. And I feel like when we see her as the person leading the audition, we watch her like let that go to her head. Like, oh, these guys have to do literally whatever I say. Let me make them look like an idiot. Of course, she's also in like full reality show villain mode too. So she's just making these kids look stupid. So some people start to get sent home and she teaches the remaining eight a ballet combination. Then out of nowhere, a guy that got cut earlier comes back and is like bouncing a basketball while walking in and some guy just runs up and fucking takes him down. He flipped out. It could have gotten really bad really quickly. We watched the crew like throw this guy out the back door and pin him down on the pavement. <laughs> It was so weird. Like, I 100% believe this was staged, but, like, he didn't do anything that warranted being <laughs> tackled like that. And Abby's pretty chill about the whole thing, too. She's just like, oh, it's so hard to be an executive producer now. So after all that craziness, Abby narrows it down to the final six, and they get to go to the house, and we start seeing them in interviews. The six dancers selected to join the Madhouse are Hannah, Elise, Austin, Savoy, David, and Dominic. When they get to the house, they pretend to be freaked out by the Halloween decorations. There's just like skeleton decorations around that are pretty cute if you ask me. And then they all run to go claim rooms. So now that we have a main cast, the fake drama can really begin. The boys talk and they say that Savoy has hater energy or whatever. And then we see the three girls talk about Abby and what her plans might be for them. Elise goes to Austin's room and since they know each other already, they decide to make an alliance. An alliance for what, you may ask? I have no idea. They don't like vote each other off of the show. It's all Abby. We'll get more into the alliances when it comes up again in a few episodes. Before everyone turns in for the night, there's a knock at the door. It's two random guys and they just kind of come right in. They say that Abby invited them because she wants to cut someone from the team already. David kicks them out and we literally never see them again. That'll be a constant theme throughout this show. So that's episode one. Are you hooked? I wasn't. Just by reality show standards, the drama is very meh and it seems very manufactured. Like the Halloween decorations, they had to be intimidated by skeleton decor from Home Goods. Are you kidding? Episode two. We see a lot more of the dancers living in the house in this episode. So the living situation is that Austin has a whole room with a big bed all to himself. David and Dominic are sharing a room that has two beds. And the three girls are all sharing one one room and one bed. I'm all for sharing a room, but sharing a bed with two other people? They're brave. In the kitchen, some of the dancers cook eggs. They show us this through vlog footage, which feels unnecessary because the cameras are right there. And Abby comes into the kitchen and gets really upset because someone burnt the eggs and now it smells. They're trying to do like a house mother thing with Abby, 
but we don't really see much of it, to be honest. She assigns chores for everyone for the day because even though she has a caregiver coming, the caregiver is not their maid. She's there to help Abby get ready for her plans that day. Abby also tells them to choreograph a solo for themselves to perform for her later. Before she leaves, Abby invites Hannah to come out with her for the day. She has this really weird and meta dialogue about it saying like, oh, you could come out with me and be the favorite for the day, or you could go and work on your solo. Whatever will you choose? It was just so weird. Like, I don't know if a person on a TV show has ever laid out a proposed drama storyline so clearly like that before. <laughs> We cut to outside and we see Savoy, Austin, and David are getting to know each other. Savoy says that she's kind of shy and sometimes people find that rude. And David tells a story about a time that he was traumatized by people he thought were his friends. It's a terrible story and I'm very sad that that happened to him. At the studio, the team is warming up when Dominic gets a call from Abby who yells at him for not being at a private lesson that he had scheduled. This is the first time we learn that while the dancers are living and training with Abby and filming this show, that they're also upholding their outside commitments like working and auditioning. So even though Dominic is there to film the TV show, he leaves to go to his home studio to go teach a lesson while everyone else rehearses their solos for Abby. Everyone except Dominic begins to show each other their solos and in interviews they all rank each other on a pyramid. They also had a photo shoot that night and Dominic returns before the photo shoot. Abby FaceTimes them again and asks them to choreograph 96 counts of a group dance for tomorrow as well. She again tells them that since they're competitors, they shouldn't help each other and that they could sabotage each other and make each other look bad. It's like she knows that there's not enough going on in this episode because there isn't. Everyone decides to do a contemporary number and as the episode ends, the dancers do the ALDC chant that the girls on Dance Moms did and they changed the words, and I didn't like that. So yeah, not much going on in episode two. All the dancers are still getting to know each other and getting comfortable in the new environment. It's so odd to me that we see Abby mostly through FaceTime since she wasn't really on set. She's an executive producer on this show though, and I bet that gives her more freedom than she had on Dance Moms. I just took a break and realized how loud my mic was, and I hope I can fix that in post for you all. I know I bitched about the sound on this show, but I'm just one girl okay? I'm not a whole production company. Episode 3 picks up right where episode 2 left off and the team starts to choreograph their group number. We also see them do that photo shoot which I believe is when they took their promo shots for the show. When it's time to leave the studio they decide to continue working back at the house but Dominic and David drove to David's house to pick up more clothes and they missed their extra little rehearsal. The next morning Austin walks into Dominic and David's room and tells Dominic that his side is too dirty and that it's un professional. Abby, like Abby said, she's looking for professionals. This does not look like professional to me whatsoever. If Abby genuinely just gets mad at you over this, I already warned you and I tried helping you out. It's just a mess and it's embarrassing. Just know that. Who the f*** is thinking? He takes a picture of it to show to Abby in case she asks, and then he calls Hannah to complain about it. David and Dominic go to Austin's room to talk and they argue in the most boring way possible. That's the thing about this show, okay? Like, it's boring, but it's boring in like an elevated sort of way where I'm questioning what the development of this show could have looked like and how we managed to get this instead. While this is all happening at the house, Abby drove Savoy to an audition and she sits in the parking lot scouting dancers while she's in there. When she comes back out, Abby asks her to do the combo, but she had forgotten it already. Abby criticizes her for that as well as her outfit, saying that wearing all black to an audition doesn't make you stand out. Then other people come out and they knew they had callbacks already, so Savoy kind of figured out that she didn't get one. Now we head back to the studio and the team is getting ready to showcase their dances when Abby invites 16 other dancers to come and watch them. 16 dancers, that's more than double the amount of dancers she has right now. They perform the group and Abby really likes it because they performed it all together like it wasn't 16 counts of this person and 16 counts of that person, you know? Then Abby has the new dancers do some improv and we see a really fun montage of a few different dance styles and Abby is just eating it up. Our core six perform their solos and Abby gives them some critiques. She tells David that his solo was confusing because the music was too masculine for the dance and then tells Elise that her solo was more feminine than she presents which are two more weird comments on gender expression. And I mean, these views don't come out of nowhere. We know Abby has always prided herself on her male dancers being 
masculine. After Dominic performs his solo, Abby reveals that she's known him for a very long time, like since the ALDC LA opened, which was... 2015? But she says that the corrections Dominic needs are long overdue, and since he's 26, she doesn't have much time to fix them. Now this is juicy stuff, right? Like this is drama I could get on board with, but no, this is all we hear about it. Hannah Austin and Savoy perform too, but they were good, not much to say. And then the episode just ends. A big problem I have with the show is its lack of structure. Like this episode started on the same day as the last episode for no reason. Like why'd they cut it like that? And I know they're not cutting it like that for time because the episode runtimes are all over the place. As of this recording there are 10 episodes out. The shortest episode is the fourth one at 23 minutes and the longest one is the ninth at 54 minutes. There's no big event or any reason for that episode to be so long or this next one to be so short. It's simply poor planning, like this show has no structure. Every day is different and they have vague amounts of time to complete their tasks and the whole thing is just muddy. You know, on Dance Moms, every episode started with the pyramid and then we did rehearsals and then, you know, sometimes we bounced to the candy apples, but it was structured, you know, you knew what you were getting. This, like, barely has a setup. So this is the fourth and shortest episode of season one. Once again, the episode starts on the same night and same setting as the last episode. These episodes are being released week by week, but it seems built for the binge model because of the way they cut the episodes. Abby calls the new dancers back up and has them do a dance off. A few get eliminated and she ends up asking three boys to stay. This is when Abby sends Dominic home. I feel like this should have been the climax of the last episode. Wouldn't that make sense? So now one of the new guys, Danny, apparently knows David because they used to be roommates. Oh my god, they were roommates. David says that they used to be best friends, but then Danny stopped paying rent and it was really traumatic. And Elise jumps in and says that she doesn't want to live with someone like that, and Danny doesn't end up going back to the house with them. The next morning, the dancers find a paper with Savoy's name and a question mark taped to a skull, and it's sitting right next to a skull that has Dominic's name taped to it. They all argue about who did it, but they don't even really show you the skulls. Then we learn that another one of the new guys from last night left because he doesn't like the drama. So Devin is the only new dancer who remains from the 16 that we met in the last episode. This episode is really short and not much happens. There is no plot here. It is just random things happening. And once again I ask, what the hell are they competing for? Also, I cannot begin to explain to you how bad the audio is on this show. Like, I know you're watching my YouTube video and I'm using a mic that I don't know how to use and this probably sounds like shit too, but like I said before, I am just one girl. They are a whole production and distribution company. I know for a fact that you can go and rent a couple microphones for like, what, a couple hundred bucks? Abby is usually mic'd up, but in the scenes with all of the dancers in the studio, you can't hear a thing anyone is saying. So as I'm sitting here ranting about how bad the sound is, my mic gives out. And I know the sound hasn't been great for the last 20 minutes, but it's about to get a lot better because I'm reshooting. Here we go! Episode 5 opens at the studio, and a girl named Felicia shows up and apologizes for being late, but Abby doesn't know who she is. She's also missing a tooth, which Abby, of course, has to comment on. She does a quick audition, but Abby sends her away. This is so icky to me. To me, this feels like the producer saw this girl's headshot and resume and threw her into film on a day Abby wasn't expecting new dancers so that she could humiliate her. Her on camera. It's not like we ever see this girl again, you know? Even if she was somehow late, why did they have to do her like that? <laughs> Abby assigns a group dance about the WGA SAG strike and appoints Elise to be the choreographer. When she jumps into leading everyone through a combo, Abby immediately chimes in with a comment about starting the dance with your hands in front of your crotch. It's a hip hop dance, but Abby's Abby. As Elise continues, Abby observes and critiques. She says that David isn't picking up as quickly as everyone else, and in an interview, David says, that Abby's views on gender are outdated and 
both statements are true. Abby tells everyone that they have to do a solo in a different genre than last time tomorrow, and a different dancer will choreograph it for them. I was really looking forward to these solos because Hannah was going to do a tap solo and Elise was going to do a musical theater solo, but we never hear about these dances again. One of the cast members posted their solo and said that they didn't make the final cut of the episodes, so why didn't they cut out this part too? Like, why promise us something you aren't gonna show us? Back at the house, Devin returns from a rehearsal for a gig and Abby reprimands him since they have to do the group dance in an hour. She says that she doesn't like his outfit or the fact that he has nail polish on and asks him if that presents a masculine image. She says he should be wearing a suit and tie and I'm sorry, why would he wear that for a hip-hop dance that they're filming in the street? I think his outfit looks great. But Abby really lays into Devin and the girls for not wanting it enough. You went to rehearsal this morning. You were out, you were in a car, you were driving, you were on the road, you could have zipped downtown and bought yourself a tie for a dollar. Everyone stands there, blank-faced, while she yells. The team performs their group dance at an intersection in front of the Warner Brothers studio when there's a red light. When this light turns red, I'm gonna stop them from turning. Look, and I made it! Just go, shut up, you're such a wuss! Can you hit me? Please hit me! After they dance, Austin leaves to literally move into college. Devin makes some comment saying he should have found another time to do that, but if his college was anything like mine, you can't. Like, they assign you a time and you have to be there, at least for freshman year. It's also so crazy to me that he's moving into college while filming a reality show. Savoy also left after the group dance to attend another audition. Abby leads the remaining dancers through a technique class, and when Savoy arrives, she says that she didn't book the gig. This episode was alright, there wasn't much in it. Uh, I like that they did a dance about the strike. During the dance, they're chanting about fair wages, and I hope that everyone working on this show got paid fairly. Episode 6 starts the next day. At least, I think it's the next day, and Richie Jackson is here. You might recognize Richie from Abby's Ultimate Dance Competition, where he was a judge, but more importantly, he's Lady Gaga's choreographer. He's done most of, if not all, of her music videos, and he's in a few of them, too. At the studio, he teaches the group a combo and has Hannah do it by herself because he wanted her to go full out, and she absolutely kills it. Before leaving, Richie tells them all to learn more styles and trust the process. Whatever is meant to happen will happen in time. He leaves, and Abby tells everyone to clean the choreo so they can perform it tomorrow. Now it's the next day, and that makes me think that Richie Jackson was there last night? It's getting pretty confusing. Anyway, everyone went to Starbucks in the morning except for David, and now he feels excluded. At the studio, they all argue about alliances or whatever bullshit. Elise and Austin defend having one, saying it's in case they have to start voting each other off. So this clarifies for me that the cast really doesn't know what could happen or how the show works either. Abby arrives and has each dancer do the combo by themselves. She brings in three new dancers, except one of them, Shanae, was part of that big group of 16 from a few episodes. Ago. Abby makes fun of Shanae's name, makes Nicolette rap, and the third dancer was an older woman whose headshot was apparently very old. Hannah teaches them Richie's combo. Abby has them watch her dancers do it and asks who was the weakest link, and two of the girls say Elise, despite David messing up the last four counts. They argue because Elise says it's personal. All of this is for nothing because, spoiler alert, none of these three dancers stay. The older woman left already and now Abby is teaching the team a group dance and has Shanae and Nicolette dance off to the sides. David is the lead of the group dance. Elise makes Shanae cry and Nicolette argues with her even more. They continue to learn the group dance but Abby gets frustrated that Shanae is pigeon-toed and abruptly sends her home. They they actually show us Shanae getting escorted out of the building and crying. The episode ends with Abby telling the group that either Nicolette has to replace Devin or she has to teach him the routine. It's a weird ultimatum and the episode ends on it for no reason because once again, the next episode starts right where we left off and resolves the issue immediately. Episode 7. Elise tells Abby that they can just teach Devin the choreography and they send Nicolette home. Since Devin is still off at another gig or something, Thing, Abby brings in a girl named Natalie to learn his part of the dance. Now what happens next is really weird and confusing. So Natalie arrives at the house the next morning and says she went to the studio and no one was there. Her call time was 9am and she says it was unprofessional for everyone else to be late. But Savoy says that they weren't called until noon. Natalie goes outside and calls Gianna Martello, who was Abby's assistant choreographer on Dance Moms and works for the ALDC. Gianna also doesn't know what's going on and why would she? She's not 
not there. Devin sets the record straight in an interview and they show us the call sheet for that day, which is a crazy way of breaking the fourth wall. The whole cast was actually called at 8 a.m., but Abby told them not to go in until noon. We then hear Abby and a producer arguing about call times. Abby, what? you kept information from production, tried to get Devin to show up at the studio when call time was literally 9 a.m. for you okay. and the entire cast. Right. She basically says she wants her call time to be 5 p.m. and that she wasn't keeping anything from production and they should just do their jobs. What? It's just like having the call time be the drama is so weird. Back inside, we see David and Austin chatting when the cameraman just fucking takes off and runs down the hall to find Natalie and Abby talking in Abby's room. It was so jarring and chaotic, like you couldn't get another camera person to film them. Abby is being very stern and tells Natalie that they aren't going to be changing around their whole day just because Natalie needs to fly off to a gig. Abby says that Devin's back anyway, so why do they need Natalie? There seems to be some serious scheduling issues with the dancers who have other gigs. And the drama being about the call sheet, like, it's just screaming unprofessional and lazy to me. But at the same time, it could be a really weird setup sort of thing. Natalie works at the ALDC LA and is all over Abby's social media, so who knows. Abby sends Devin to return some costume pieces they aren't using and tells him to buy nail polish remover while he's there. The other boys go with him and they talk about sticking together, perhaps starting an alliance as the boys. At the studio, the girls discuss how having a girls alliance. The boys arrive from Target and side note, they throw captions under this randomly because once again, everything is barely audible and they misspell Celsius. They warm up as Abby arrives and they talk about what the dance means. Since David was left out of the Starbucks run in the last episode, that's kind of what this dance is about. It's called Beautiful Loneliness and Abby tells David that he brings this on himself and he makes himself the victim in situations. While the girls change into costume, Abby talks about about how choreographing from her wheelchair is difficult for her, and when she was 21, she dislocated her knee and became a real stickler for dance terminology because of that. And I thought that was a really interesting look into the way Abby teaches. They performed the group dance and Abby loved it. She was planning on sending someone home, but she doesn't because she's so pleased. The team's next assignment is to write and record a theme song for the TV show that they're currently filming, and they'll do that tomorrow. That night, Abby invites a businessman named Alex to the house House, and she makes fun of the team's outfits in front of him, but he says they look great. He's looking for fresh faces to be ambassadors for his brand, and they all talk a bit before he leaves, and Abby yells at everyone about the dishes. New dancers show up in almost every episode, but so far, Devin is the only one who's been chosen and stayed. It just feels like a waste of time on every front. And listen, I'm not trying to be overly negative about this. I know this show is on a small network owned by a pretty young guy, and I don't want to totally shit on a project made by people who probably cared about it, but the appeal of this show is just not there for me. I also think that working with and platforming Abby Lee Miller, who is famous for treating children badly and being racist, isn't a great look either. And that's kind of why I don't want to dance mom season 9 or a reboot. The environment these kids were subjected to is unhealthy and it's not something I want to encourage no matter how entertaining the original Dance Moms was. And you know, at least with Madhouse, they're technically adults, I guess. Some dancers get it, some dancers don't. That separates, you know, the men from the boys, so to speak. Or the they from the thems, whatever they say now. Episode 8. The team goes to the recording studio to create the show's theme song and Savoy kind of takes the lead with it since she's in a girl group. Devin has to leave early early again because of a gig in Vegas, and he reveals that he actually has to miss the entire day tomorrow, too, and he hasn't told Abby yet. Austin steps aside to call Abby, and he tells her. They're really making Austin out to be a tattletale. Meanwhile, Abby's at the studio with, surprise, three new dancers. She's excited to see them because she knew all of them when they were younger. One of the girls, Eva, went to high school with Savoy, and this will be very important later. When the team arrives at the studio, Abby confronts David and says she's shocked he even showed up. David, what are you doing here? You want to be here? You're here? I'm shocked. I didn't think that I would see you. You wore a bandeau top covering just your breasts to a business meeting? She's upset about his outfit last night, which was like a bandeau tube top sort of shirt with a flannel. She says that it was unprofessional to wear to a business meeting and she sends him home. Goodbye. 
David really comes for her in his final interview. He calls her evil and says something like, the girls you held since they were kids don't even want to talk to you anymore. And wow, we're bringing up the Dance Moms girls now. The rest of the episode is pretty choppy and confusing. Abby teaches a ballet class and has everyone improv. Abby then kicks Austin out of his room because remember he's got that whole big room to himself and tells Elise to take it. Then she has the three new girls step away for a second, ask Savoy for the dirt on Eva from high school, but Savoy won't say much. Abby then makes them perform the new theme song and seems to hate it and suggests a lyric change and demands a co-writing credit? Like she actually argues with them about that. Isn't this your show? Can't you just slap your name on the song like you did all those dancers you never trained? So it turns out one of these new girls brought her mom to the studio with her, so Abby calls her onto the floor. Abby tears this poor woman to shreds and says she's gonna invite her daughter into the madhouse to get away from her. Mom, why did you bring your mother? I'm keeping Leela in the madhouse to get her the hell away from you. What? What did this woman do to deserve Abby Lee Miller yelling at her like that? The two other girls also get invited back. Abby tells Austin to sleep on the couch, which is just as out of nowhere as it seems. Everyone's really confused by it. The episode ends with Austin admitting to everyone that he told Abby that Devin won't be around tomorrow. The biggest thing that stood out to me about this episode was the few frames we saw of someone holding up a boom mic on set. I was absolutely shocked to see it because as we know, the dialogue is really quiet and hard to hear. It's also becoming apparent as time goes on that the cast seems to be getting fed up with everything. Like the Austin sleeping on the couch thing. Everyone was like, what the fuck, why? And David got kicked off the show for wearing a crop top? The cast will kind of start to fight back in the next few episodes. Episode nine is 54 minutes long. And for what? The fight we left off on resumes. Everyone's mad at Devin for not telling Abby that he has to leave. This argument goes on forever, and I literally don't know what they're talking about by the time it ends. The dancers do another photo shoot, but it's not for BTV this time, it's for ALDC merchandise. Abby's providing them with such great opportunities. You can find the pictures on the ALDC website. Lila, the new girl whose mom Abby screamed at, tells Abby that she's moving to London for three years very soon so she can't stay. They cannot get people to stay on this show! Back at the house, Hannah and Savoy set up a game called Pick Your Poison, which is basically truth or dare, but it's just truth. It's mostly boring, but when Eva gets asked who the weakest dancer is, she says Abby, which was pretty funny. There's some tension between Eva and Savoy, but they don't get into it yet. Their assignment the next day is to create a mini musical in two hours. They're all assigned vague roles for the show, but they have to create the plot and stage it. Eva and Savoy Savoy's characters are both running for student body president, so we're continuing this weird rivalry. Everyone gets frustrated with the assignment really quickly. It's pretty ridiculous. What kind of mini musical can be created in two hours that will be good enough for Abby to approve of? This isn't even an acting challenge, really. It's more of a devising, directing, writing challenge. After lunch, they perform for Abby, and it's terrible. It's just bad. There's no other way to put it. They do a group dance that leads into a poorly written skit and there's no singing. At the end, Eva's character wins the race by having hairy armpits because that makes her a feminist. And that's our feminism. That conclusion is certainly something and Abby is not a fan. Eva actually hasn't shaved her legs or her armpits in four years and Abby gives her grief about it. She tries to get Austin to tell her that it's gross and he refuses because he he doesn't care. No one cares besides Abby. In the next sequence, Abby calls each dancer forward and asks them to show her dance moves reminiscent of old dance eras and shows. Once again, her improv prompts are vague, like Hannah gets can can and Austin gets you're auditioning for Oklahoma, go! Abby gets incredibly frustrated during this exercise because the kids don't know their dance history, but at the same time she's being unclear and expecting them to be familiar with shows like Happy Days when they're like 19. And I do understand her frustration to an extent, like yes, Elise should know to do the Charleston when Abby barks 1920s at her, but her communication and delivery are just so bad. Abby yells at Hannah for not memorizing the combo she learned at the Music Man audition that she went to years ago. Which, by the way, I think her little brother was in that show, along with Gino. Where I see love, she sees a friend. 
all roads lead back to Dance Moms and the ALDC. We then cut to Devin, who is vlogging while driving back to the madhouse after his gig. Abby tells Austin to call Devin and tell him not to come back, but Austin refuses. This is when all of the dancers start arguing with Abby, because isn't this the point of the madhouse? To train and actually book gigs? Austin asks if Savoy had booked one of those auditions, if she would have been kicked out, and Abby says yes. Everyone is exasperated, and Abby says she'll take care of Devin. Everyone kind of gangs up on Austin at this point for snitching to Abby. Devin calls Savoy and tells him what happened and that he should come back and beg for forgiveness. Then, out of nowhere, Eva and Savoy start arguing about nothing again. Like, we still don't know what their beef is. Back at the house, everyone agrees that Abby is being a total hypocrite because no matter what they do, they're always wrong. They're catching on, guys. And that's the end of the episode. So a few weeks ago, I commented on a BTV post on Instagram and I asked how many episodes there are of Madhouse, and they said 10, which would mean that we've hit the finale, thank God. But we could only be so lucky. This is not the finale. I'm not sure why there was a discrepancy about the amount of episodes, but whatever, we're here, so let's suck it up and keep going. Episode 10. Everyone's getting ready for the day when Devin goes to talk to Abby. He brings a Twinkie and a Coke to apologize to her with. Abby tells him that he should have told her about the conflict earlier and that this was sneaky. In his interview, Devin calls her a hypocrite, but he doesn't get kicked out. All of the dancers head to the studio, and Eva and Savoy finally talk about why they have beef. Apparently, Savoy was seeing this boy in high school, and Eva hooked up with him and claims that she didn't know that they were together because Savoy talked to a lot of boys. Then, Eva calls out Hannah for being Savoy's little sidekick, and everyone starts arguing about dumb shit again. Abby arrives, and she's already in a bad mood. She says she was so worked up about how the group doesn't know anything about anything that she called a friend who decided to come in, and then walks in Debbie Allen. Debbie Allen is a legendary choreographer. She's been nominated for 20 Emmys and two Tonys. She's probably most well known for fame, but she's also an executive producer and director for Grey's Anatomy, and she was on the Presidential Committee for Arts and Humanities, and she's somehow friends with Abby Lee Miller. Debbie Allen also appeared on Dance Moms in like two episodes when she invited the girls to dance at her studio when Abby was MIA. It seems like an odd pairing at first because Debbie Allen is so well spoken spoken and calm and generally nice and Abby's Abby. But I can see them, you know, sitting around drinking coffee and talking about dance history for ages, so I guess it makes sense that they're friends. And that's kind of what Debbie is here to do. She talks to the dancers about knowing about choreographers, dance styles, and dance history in general. Abby jumps in and says she's frustrated with them for not spending every waking moment working towards their goals and then make some snarky comment about Taylor Swift having bad posture and being pigeon-toed before Debbie cuts her off. This episode aired the same week that Abby made some comment about Taylor Swift being a bad dancer on her podcast. It made a few headlines, so I guess she got what she wanted out of that comment. Debbie leaves, but says she'll be back to see them perform later. Abby jumps into teaching an acro class, which is something she loves, but many of these dancers aren't too familiar with. Savoy in particular was struggling as she'd never taken an acro class before. Abby threw a fit when Austin couldn't do a back tuck, so she took his phone and FaceTimed his teacher, and when the teacher picks up, he immediately asks Austin to do a back tuck and laughs because he knows he can't. Abby and his teacher end up walking him through it, and he does it pretty well. Abby says that Hannah was the best student of the day, but a lot of people learned a lot of new things. While they're eating lunch, Abby pulls up to sit with them. She says tomorrow is their last day, and oh, Thanks for finally giving us a timeline or an end date of any sort. Hannah says that as a token of appreciation, everyone hired a personal trainer who will be coming in to help Abby walk. Abby goes to physical therapy pretty often to stay active, and she seems to really appreciate the dancers stretching with her and watching her walk. Abby shows the trainer her scar from surgery and tells him how 13 vertebrae were being choked by cancer. Abby was diagnosed with Burkitt lymphoma in 2018 after being released from prison, and in short, that's why she uses a wheelchair now. She is able to walk, but she typically needs a walker and continues with physical therapy to be able to do so. And you know what? It's a nice scene overall, I guess. After the trainer leaves, Abby says that tomorrow is a big day and they shouldn't wear matching outfits. It's time to be selfish and get competitive. So does this mean that the next episode might have an actual challenge or competition that will have a winner? Is someone going to walk away with a prize of some sort? It's all very exciting. But if you're hoping for more Debbie Allen, I'm sorry. Sorry to report that despite the editors leaving in that she'll be back, 
she does not return. I mean, she might have, but we don't see it. Episode 11. We've made it to the finale. I should probably point out now that there are three reunion episodes to be released after this one, but I've decided not to recap them. I just don't want to. I don't know. The final episode begins the next day with Abby yelling at everyone for not doing their chores and dirtying up the shoes she was going to return to the store. After cleaning up, a choreographer named Paul Becker arrives to give the dancers a challenge that will double as an audition for him. I looked up Paul Becker and I consider his most significant credit choreographing the kissing booth. Everyone has to choreograph and film a dance in one shot and they're all paired up except for Hannah because Abby wants her to dance by herself. Hannah later overhears Abby saying she did that because she wants Hannah to fail. This mostly becomes an issue during the reunion episodes and like I said we aren't really going to cover those. While figuring out her dance with Austin, Elise gets a text confirming that she's booked a gig and her flight leaves very soon. Austin's pretty upset by this and Abby tells her to have an attorney get her out of the contract. Elise leaves anyway. Abby tells Austin to do a solo, but he ends up working with Hannah. Savoy and Eva are paired up, as are Jordan and Devin, so why would they do solos when they want their best shot at impressing Paul? Savoy and Eva take some advice from Paul when they're struggling with their vision, and Abby gets upset that no one asked for her opinion. After finishing up their videos, the team arrives at the studio one final time. Paul announces that Abby is not coming because she's upset that Austin and Hannah went against her wishes. However, Paul doesn't care about that at all, and the team is pretty unbothered by Abby's absence since they're all getting pretty fed up with her. We see everyone's videos and Paul gives his feedback. He says Eva and Savoy's idea was good, but the execution itself wasn't great and Devin and Jordan's video was cute, but they could have done something more creative. Paul mostly just compliments Austin and Hannah's, even though they may have broken Abby's rules, saying that they had great lifts and technique. He says that if he has to pick a winner, which like, does he? It would be Hannah and Austin. However, Abby only wants five people in her house, and now is the time for the team to vote someone off. I don't really understand why we're voting someone off now, because like, it's the last day. Even if they have one more night at the house, it's not getting filmed. Anyway, Hannah and Eva vote for Devin to leave. Jordan votes for Savoy, and Savoy agrees based on what she knows Jordan's seen of her, which is funny and self-aware. Eva had the most votes, with Austin, Savoy, and Devin voting for her. Paul tells them it's time to pack their bags and see if they get a call from him for a job or Abby inviting them back to the madhouse. And that is the final episode of Madhouse. Okay, so there wasn't a winner. I guess there was a final five being Hannah, Savoy, Austin, Devin, and Jordan, but that feels like a weird way to conclude all this. Also, the fact that Abby wasn't there to wrap up the show for us was really weird and just leaves the show feeling unfinished. And that might be why they gave us three reunion episodes to compensate. At the end of the day, I don't think the show accomplished what it set out to do besides get some people to download the BTV app. It was Abby Lee Miller's big return to reality TV, but I think having her in a producer role may have been a detriment to the show. It was supposed to be a competition show, but there was no structure and no one won. It was teased to be season 9 of Dance Moms, and it wasn't even reminiscent of Dance Moms. This mysterious season 9 is still happening in some form or another, at least based off of Abby's social media posts, but I don't know if it'll be on BTV. So what's next for Abby and BTV? Abby's living in New York City, and I think she's currently filming season 9. BTV just announced a new show called Obsessed, with Brandon Stewart, and I think Savoy and Austin are guests on the first episode. Overall, I did not enjoy watching this show. Maybe for someone out there, they love it, and it's their new favorite reality show, and good for them. But for me, I just can't get past the confusing structure, the lack of planning, lazy manufactured drama, and... Abby Lee Miller being an unreliable narrator throughout the whole thing. If you'd like to hear me talk more about Madhouse, Abby, and Dance Moms, check out my TikTok page and my other YouTube videos. I also have a podcast called Feminine Features where my friend Sully Windsor and I talk about chick flicks, and I would really appreciate you checking that out. I was also just recently a guest on the Pyramid podcast where we talked about the infamous Rosa Parks episode of Dance Moms. I'll leave links to all of that below in the description. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss the rise and fall of Abby. Abby Lee Miller Part 3, whenever the hell that's gonna come out. I'm JB, and thank you for watching.